Hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, can you talk us through your, your, your new men who've arrived since we last spoke? I've got it down as Aaron, Hans and, and Wilson. Aaron in particular, I guess, will, will cause a lot of interest, bearing in mind he's, it's his old club this weekend. Yeah, I mean, um, ext <laughs> ext uh, for, me, for me always, um, ext extremely talented, um, I think, crop of players we brought in, I think. Aaron and, and Wilson are probably the younger ones that, that have a bright future. We have no doubt they will be um, really exciting players to watch for our fans and, and, and just for any neutral fan that likes good football players. And then in terms of Hannes, a uh, little bit more senior, a little bit more experienced, uh, Belgian international, someone that's um, played European games and um, with the physicality that's required for the Premier League. So we're, we're excited to welcome them. Aaron keen to play this weekend or are you going to have to rein him in a bit? I, I would hope that they're all keen to play. Yeah, I would hope so. <laughs> Does it make your selection a little bit tricky? I mean, you've got a, you've got a decent squad of players now. Um, I, I would love it to be as tricky as possible. I, I, I really, I think we as a club embrace competition. We, we, I think we feel that this is the way that you get progress and development. And I've never trusted a player that is a standout number one to tell me, yeah, yeah, coach, I'm fine. I'm going to do well. I'm going to keep doing my best. Yeah, you will. But if you've got competition, you certainly will. And so that's what I think lives in the club. And the players are, are also really together and, and, and helping each other get, um, you know, get better. I know we ask you this every week, building up to the deadline. But have you nearly finished spending now? Um, it depends who is up to. If it's up to me, maybe not. Um, but in the end, I think um, um, we've, we've really be, been able to attract a lot of players that we, we thought were going to be um, really exci exciting for us to work with on the short term and on the long term. And, and we've definitely growth everywhere within the club. Um, but if we can add to it, I think we're, we're not going to turn it down. You talked about cohesion in the past. I mean, how, how quickly does this squad have to, 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 to gel? Because, you know, the games are coming thick and fast now. Yeah, but you can't talk yourself into cohesion. So um, it's a lot of work, a lot of a um, little bit more video analysis, a little bit more individual work, a little bit more of everything. But um, I, I think if the characters and the mentality is right, you can cut the time down a little bit for that you know, cohesion to settle in. But in the end, whatever it is, we, we, we're, we're embracing the next challenge. And, you know, if we win, we'll learn from it. If we lose, we'll, we'll learn from it. But the goal is certainly to, to be the best version of ourselves again. Can I ask you about Villa? Because they've, they've had a good couple of weeks, good win against Everton, really good win against Hibernian. What have you seen of them? What do you make of them? They're an impressive squad. I think... Um, you can see it's one of these squads who's settled in the Premier League a little bit now and, and they've been able to have a few rounds of recruitment and as well a few rounds of developing their own players and and it's a robust team, you know, um, athletic, good speed, um, definitely, you know, worth worth being part of the discussion for that top eight in, in England, which is of such a high standard, such a high level and I think I've already gathered that there's not going to be any easy games for us this season, so kind of approach it the same way as I would any other game and uh, try and give ourselves a chance to win the game. That's that's what we want. Just how important is that first win for you psychologically? For me, I'm, I'm fine, you know, with it. I think it'll come when it comes. But um, I don't think we have to, to think too much about it. Look, if you have the mindset that we have and it's try and win every game, um, then really the only thing you focus on is the next game and you know whatever happened in the past is not so important it's the next game and, and we'll prepare with everything we can to, to get the result at home and I know you may have touched on this in the past but recently you had that spell with the England Rugby Union camp what, yeah. what, what lessons what, what things have you taken from that experience and have you introduced any of that into your, into your football training? Um, I, I think it, it it just emphasises again how uh, you know it's a it's a it's, it's an environment filled with very big physical imposing but very humble people very very friendly people just you can see that there's good people good habits good standards and um, 
And in that sense, I, I hope I, I did get a little bit of a feeling that there are similarities with us. I don't think we're the superstars in this league at all, but I think we share the work rate. I think we share the bravery in the team and and the desire to to help each other. And and that really transpires when you go and um, speak to the England lads. So yeah, look, I've got a reason to support them as well. The missus is English. The kids, I think feel more English unfortunately <laughs> for me <laughs> but um, but so yeah we've got the shirt at home and, and we're looking forward to support them thank you yeah. hi Vincent <clears throat> hi there hi. Um, how do you practically go about integrating that number of players I know you did it last season but I think it was 10 and the season days. before and the season before that yeah <laughs> and how I'm beneficial is not playing last weekend to that potentially yeah, it was massive for us, definitely. So, um, um, look, we'll play the games we have to play, but at this moment in time, to get, to have a little bit of more time, it's it's important for us. So, uh, we had a chance to to stop the clock a little bit. Um, but then, in the end, when you've done the two weeks, I think you're eager to to start again and see if you've you've made steps. I think the, the boys made a good account of themselves in the last game and, 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 and hopefully we, um, we get nearer results and, and, I mean, try and get results every game. So this would be a, a tremendous opportunity for us to make the next step. I heard another manager this week say that his players were kind of getting up to speed and learning in competitive games and that's really difficult. Is that something that you share? Is the time on the training pitch more important at the early stages? No, I mean it. I mean it makes sense if you go and work for another radio station and you get thrown in front of players and everything. And meanwhile, you've got to get to learn your colleagues and what they want you to ask and what the vibe is of that place. You know, you'll always be a better version, a better fit for that place after having done a few months. You know, and it's no different for players. So we've just. But but in the end, it's also part of what what we said. We. I think we have the, we had the choice to stand still, and then obviously you you benefit a little bit more of a settled team, or to use the fact that we went to the Premier League to actually do what we need to do in my opinion, and is to strengthen as much as we can as early as we can, and you take a little bit of the pain in the beginning, and hopefully in the long term it pays off. But standing still, going from the Championship into the Premier League. Um, yeah, it's 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 not an exercise that would have worked well for us, you know, in terms of trying to grow and not just survive forever in the Premier League. It seems unlikely that anyone had head on head hunt me for my performances here, but thank you. Um, as far as the makeup of that squad is concerned, twenty three and a half, I think the average age was for the opening game. Does that help? Are they more receptive, younger players, to new things? Um, I, th I think it's still a mix. If you, if you look throughout the entire squad, I think we we, we have a mixed. Um, I think in the end, we, we try to look at the best available talent in the market. Age age has age is a component, but it's not something that we put first and say like age, age, age. It's, it's not this. We look at the talent of players and a lot of those talents, I think, would have been inaccessible for us you know um, not so long ago and and to have them here to have them amongst us it's it's an important way for us to, like I said we can either struggle for the next 10 years or we can try and use this season to maybe struggle one season but then make a a, a, um, a, a leap forward as soon after you know I, I, I think this is the kind of squad we have we have a squad that can um, progress um, for a number of years, like for us, it's it's one year where um, I think it's going to be no different than any of the teams that have just come up. But that would have been in any way, in whatever way we would have shaped the squad, it would have always been the same. You know, the first year is always a risky year, difficult year. But I think that looking past this year, and if you look at a cycle of three years, I mean, this team has got some real, real potential, and that's exciting, at, le at least. And you only lost one home league game last season. Is that the benchmark? Is that what you have to strive for? Or do you have to recalibrate because you're in the Premier League? Uh, we didn't lose one game because we said we only want to lose one. We lost one game because we tried to win every game. And, and then 
things happen and, and, and probably the game we lost at home was a game we should have never lost. But okay, it's life. Um, and, and, and therefore you can see how these moments stick. So, um, but therefore I think for us now, yes, it's a different league. Um, I, I see the level in trainings better than last season. I see that the, the boys that were the leading players last season are facing competition now, which means the squad is inevitably improved and you see it in training. And as long as that basis is there, then I feel that we've, um, you know, we're, we've given ourselves a chance to, to get to the levels required for the Premier League. Okay. Thanks, Hi, Vinny. Um, yeah. With the sheer number of players that have come in, is, are there any worries about squad morale with the players who maybe uh, play a big part in bringing the club up last season, being left out? No, morale, no. It, it, I'm trying to explain as well as much as I can to now the Premier League media that, that it just doesn't happen. It's just not possible. Like players can have a down day like everyone else, can have a bad moment, but uh, no one makes any kind of progress in our team if they think that it's all about them, if they think that they've got to feel sorry for themselves. We'll be there for them, we'll push them, we'll try and give them everything they can to improve but they've got to earn the spot. And it lives as a, it lives within the club, in the culture. So, okay, you know, sometimes you have a tough time. It happens in life. And if you have the right surrounding, the right support, you get through it. And we try and be the right surrounding and the right support. If a player doesn't want that, um, then, then it's also fine. Then for us, it's clear. You would have played uh, Luton last week, um, but having missed that out, it's now a game a more, more difficult one on paper against Villa. Would you have rather have played last week than having this time to spend on the training ground? Um, no, look, for me in the end, it, it like I said, it was important to, I, I don't know, in the end, more time for us on the grass was probably more valuable to like both, I think, team. So all the teams that got promoted, I would expect us to get better as the season goes. So Luton would be the same. I would expect Sheffield United with the players that they have to integrate to be the same. So at the moment really is for us to find our feet as quickly as we can, get points on the board. Um, I'm not saying that every situation is the same, of course, but in general, um, I, I don't I look, we'll play the game when it comes. And meanwhile, we, we did our best to prepare the team. Yeah, and in the documentary that's come out, you sort of, uh, there were occasions where you laid into your players quite a bit, uh, lost your rag maybe a few a few times. But has there been more of that this week or after, after the City game or has been been a bit more calmer? I, I think, honestly, I think I'm, I'm actually a really, really calm, rational person. I don't... Uh, I, I, I usually um, deal with defeat and wins more calm than anyone I've ever met in that sense. The only thing I don't accept is if we go against our basics. If you don't work hard, you have a problem with me. Um, if you make it about yourself and not the team, you have a problem with me. But in terms of making mistakes, and um, I tell our players, I'm convinced that we've got the next £100 million pound player in our team somewhere. I don't know which one, but there's going to be one of them that's going to make this jump. And I don't really look at mistakes as a bad thing if they're willing to be coachable. But if you don't want to be working hard and if you don't want to improve, then within this club, there's no future. Um, and that's the only thing. So the basics, you know, like you, you, you love everyone, but in the end, you know, um, there's moments as a, as a group where we... I think, I think we have to be accountable, but it, these moments, they get highlighted in one moment, in one fragment, and it can get turned back out for many years, but in reality, it's um, how I am here is probably how I am to my, yeah. to my players. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, nice. It's kind of easy to see what, what <coughs> gets me annoyed and what doesn't, you know, like they've thrown every question at me and I've always kind of always batted them away because I really feel that it's not the point. But if my team doesn't work hard and don't reflect the people of Burnley, yeah, then then what's my job if I'm not going to do anything about it? We're, we're only two two games in, Vinny. So <laughs> it's a long season ahead. Thanks, Vinny, good to see you again. Um, you've had a while to reflect on that Man City game. What were you personally and your team able to take away from that experience overall? Yeah, I'd probably say in, at this moment in time, we've moved on quite... quite um, 
quite quite a bit from this game. I think, uh, you know, there's a standout game there that's that's not the benchmark for this league. I don't think it's yeah, it's the highest of the <coughs> highest. But um, I think for us, looking at Villa, we see a team that um, it's a different game, but it's a team that's got so many tools to actually. You know that we we have to be the uh, at our best level in every game in this league. There's no other way. So to look back at City for me it doesn't make any sense when I've got a, the toughest game again uh, at the weekend, and that's how we're going to approach every game, really. Naturally, players are very competitive, and rightly so. And despite it being the treble winners and so on, your players will no doubt be disappointed from simply a defeat. Always. Is one of your main challenges as a manager this season to ensure? that players are still able to take positives from negative results? And if so, how do you go about doing that and ensuring your side's continued growth? Yeah, I, I think my my main thing, and again, after after these games, I, I, I try and stay away from, from the, believe it or not, I try and completely stay away from the emotional th side of things. For me, it's important to um, be supportive, to give them a, a framework to, 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 to improve. And I really focus on that. So there's the things we want to do before the game, the things we did in the game, and we can always compare whether you know it was either the right, the wrong ideas or the wrong execution. And I keep my players on that pathway to improve because, um, as we learned last year in the championship, the worst thing we c that can happen is have this emotional roller coaster. You could win four in a row, but you could win you could lose four in a row, but you can win four in a row, or five or six in a row. You know, and and when you have that momentum then you have to protect it by, again, doing those basics even better. Um, and it lives, it lives here. And, and the good thing is still a, a, a large amount of players have um, gone through it at the start of last season with us. Um, and I've gone through it in my career as a player and as a coach as well before I came to Burnley. And, and I know how we'll react in good moments and difficult moments. We'll just continue the path. You face a Villa side full of threats none more so potentially than Ollie Watkins. Mm -hmm. From a former centre-half's perspective, what advice do you give to your defenders to, to attempt to contain him? It's, it's, it's different for everyone, I think. In, in our case, I think we have to solve it as a team. You know, um, it's, it's not going to be about just the battle of one centre-back against, against a good striker. It's going to be um, just the team solving problems or avoiding problems to, to happen. Um, obviously, I can't. I can't. I, I want to be respectful in saying, like you know, we there's um, yeah. As a centre back, there, there was a point where you know you 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 kind of looking forward to all, all, all sorts of challenges. It's, it's not not much else to say. Finally, just given the work that you've put on the training ground, do you feel confident ahead of this one? Always, always feel confident. At least we're we're prepared. At least we, you know, I, I feel nervous if we haven't put in the work. I feel nervous if we have cut corners. But when we've done the whole, and there's still another day tomorrow, but if by tomorrow we've done the work and we've been committed and we've, we've stayed together, then uh, whatever happens, I'll, I'll be there for the team. I'll, we'll support and, and we'll feel like we've given ourselves the best chance. That's, that's all we can do. Brilliant, thank you very much. Right, thank Just you. Just before we go up to the um, bar guard, Ellie. Yeah, shall I shout? Yeah, go on, do it now. <laughs> Hi, Vinny. Uh, Hi there. How's Michael Oberfemi getting on in, in his recovery? Um, still some, some time away from, from being back. Um, obviously, it was an injury that happened for us at a very bad time because it happened when he was on international break. So we had no control over it or anything. And, you know, we, we just had a player coming back leaving fit, coming back injured. But meanwhile, I think he's, um, he's making the best out of this situation to get back um, stronger. Do you know yet when he might be available? Mm, I don't like it. Long-term injuries, I don't like to, to put it. But let's put it this way. If you ask me the question next month, I'm probably going to have the same answer. Okay. Fair, Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and how big a, a miss is uh, Anna Sorori going to be over the next few games? Um, yeah, it'd look a big miss because he's, he's, he's been a key player for us. But I think it's part of what I said as well about all of our key players last season getting pushed. So I do, I do want to see it as well as something for him to 
to take away as a challenge, you know, to use it to to get ready, get better and, 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 and come and bring another boost to the team. So it is an interesting case because he has still so much growth in him and he's never been exposed to this level of football. So these guys from experience as well, you see them changing in the first year, after the first year in the Premier League, during or after the first year in the Premier League. And I'm actually quite excited if the mentality is right, which in this case is, is obviously really good. Um, I'm actually quite excited to see these this players transform and transition uh, being exposed to the highest level they've ever been exposed to.